So the plantar fascia is this sheet of connective tissue that goes from the front of our heel, attaches in here to the heel, and extends to the base of the metatarsals. And then connectively out into the um, toes. But it's really explicitly from the bottom of the metatarsals, head, the distal part of the metatarsals, to the front of the heel. A sheet of connective tissue. Uh, fascia, or it's also called the plantar aponeurosis. And an aponeurosis is a relatively flat sheet of connective tissue as opposed to a strap, which would be more like a ligament, or something that surrounds something, which would be a joint capsule. So in between the layer of bones and ligaments that make these, this shape of the foot and the plantar fascia is a whole bunch of other stuff, which are muscles. There's all this muscle stuff in here. Da, 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 da. Filling in. So the plantar fascia is barring the skin, almost the bottom most structure in, uh, in our foot. Now, if we have an arch, like that keystone arch, if we have an arch, that's not quite the shape of a keystone. We have something connecting the bottom of it. If the arch is able to maintain its archiness in relationship to that plantar fascia, that connection, then not too much is asked of this fascia in terms of lengthening. If, however, the weight coming in to the arch should make it flatten out, then the fascia will be asked to lengthen as well. Now, fascia is flexible but not so elastic, right? So it's not so, it's not so happy about lengthening as it is, it's happy about, ada about adapting, about moving like a yoga mat, this yoga mat, very flexible, not so elastic, little bit. But if I ask too much of it, if I distorted it too much, then it wouldn't go back. And the yoga mat doesn't have nerve endings in it, but the plantar fascia does. So the plantar fascia gets asked to stretch too much. It kind of throws a temper tantrum. And often we don't notice over the course of time that it's stretching. But then, this is what fascia tends to do. When you stop stretching it and it goes back, it doesn't, go, it doesn't go right back, but when you stop stretching it, when the weight is off of it and it gets more circulation, and it gets more sensitized, it can get a little inflamed and then it can get really cranky and feel like it's burning or then really tight. Because say you've been on your feet all day then the fascia is gradually stretched out. You don't feel it getting pulled apart, but then you go to bed at night and it gets a little inflamed and then it might actually start to go back, but that inflammation, that irritation, will then, when you get up in the morning and stand on it, feel like this burning sensation or this real tightness, right? And that is this irritation of the plantar fascia, which is called plantar fasciitis. So itis means irritation, <laughs> aggravation, it means a temper tantrum. Tendonitis is a temper tantrum in the tendons. It's <laughs> so oversimplifying. Clearly, but so plantar fasciitis is this irritation of the plantar fascia 
that results in a feeling of tightness but comes from it having been overstretched. And the treatment for it, I'm, I hear more and more now that people are treating it by stretching their fascia out, which I think is not really addressing the underlying issue. Um, if moving the, if there's things that people do for it that, that are about mobilizing, rolling around on a ball, the stuff that brings circulation to the fascia helps it recover, helps it get what it needs to not be irritated. But actually stretching the fascia out doesn't take care of the underlying issue, which is that the weight is not traveling clearly through the foot in such a way that, um, that the arches are maintained. It's not, and again, it's not the height of the arch, but that whatever arch you have can be supported by the pathway through the bones rather than just passively through the plantar fascia.